On today's show, we're going to be talking about our writing lives, how to fit writing into your summer fun. So stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on their journey to publication. I'm Christina Katane, and I write Christian fantasy. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. So we're so happy to be back and to see all of you guys, um, even though we can't see you. Uh, it's a figurative C. <laughs> um, and um, we're so happy for all you that watch us live and who listen on podcasts. Uh, we took the, a few weeks off, but we're back. Mm-hmm. Stronger than ever, right? Nice <laughs> right? Yes. And um, Well, we didn't lose everybody because Shell's here this morning. Good morning, Shell. Yay, somebody Yay. came back. Someone, someone's <laughs> not mad that we were gone so long. Well, and I had kind of a week, and I didn't get on the Facebook page and warn everybody we were back. Oh. So hopefully they figure it out. Um, so we just want to – we usually start with what's up, so let's go to our what's up. What's up with you? Um, well, before I do that, I just want to say Piper's here as well. Hi, Piper. She says she missed us. We missed you guys, we too. Missed you guys, too. You may not have thought so, because, like – Tina, I also have not been in the Facebook group. I've just been so busy. And that's why we took these weeks off is because I had two Fridays in a row that I had um, commitments that I had to go to for my children. And and one of and one was for my child. And the other one was a, a retreat. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And then, um, then we had Memorial Day weekend. And so it was just kind of like, like it just wasn't working out. So we just took a few weeks off. But yeah, so I've been busy. I went on a retreat. First of all, I chaperoned a trip for my teenagers, uh, for all the youth group from our church. And we went to um, Olivet Nazarene College University. It used to be college back in the day. And they, uh, my kids all competed in different things, drama and some music. And um, yeah, it was a whole lot of fun. Um, I just realized, though, that I am definitely 50 now. I turned 50 earlier this month. And because they put us on the fourth floor walk up in this one dorm. And like, you don't just like do it once, like all day long, you're going back and forth and back and forth. And my thighs hated me by the end of that weekend. And then I got home Saturday night, Sunday I had with my family. And then Monday I headed out with um, our pastor and and his fiance and myself. And we went on a leadership retreat that was so great. It was called Intern Academy is the organization and they do a retreat every year. And we don't have an intern right now, but it's like a good thing to go to, to kind of like make connections and maybe plan to have an intern someday, but just to be able to to hang out with other people doing ministry that are just going to be like, um, just honest about what's happening. Like how many times do you get to sit and just like have coffee at six 30 in the morning with whoever woke up that early or stay up till three in the morning, which I didn't, I'm not, I don't stay up. But. I was going to say that that didn't happen. No, but the, Caleb, that's Caleb's jam is staying up you know, really right. late. Yeah. Me, I'm like the early morning person. Um, and I just got to meet some really cool people and got to like hear their stories. And it really like helped to me to kind of go, go, direct some things that I'm doing at church. So that was just a really good time of like just rest and relaxation, which I have not done in forever. And then I came back home and this week has been a hot mess. (laughs) There's just so much going on. Like we are, are throwing a shower for um for Lydia for on this Sunday because they're getting married in July so our church is doing a shower um and the and the day before that is our graduation service which is a lot of work to get all the bits and pieces from everybody and get everything and then get all the presents ordered and I literally just got an email. I woke up to an email this morning from somebody that I don't know who it is with pictures of their kindergartner and I don't have a form for them. And I got to figure that out when we're done here. Oh, this no. is also, so it's just been that kind of week. And I feel like I'm like just all over the place um, trying to get everything done and completely forgotten, not forgotten about the podcast, but not really put my mind over there. So I'm sorry that I've been MIA. Hopefully next week it'll be a little bit better, but yeah. So that's my what's up, a pretty long one, but I guess we've been gone a while. So that's why. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What What did you do during your three weeks? Well, 
That's, well. that's Saturday after our last podcast. Eliana and Amber were here, as they always are, Friday mm-hmm. and Saturday. And Eliana <clears throat> had a little raspiness in her voice. Oh. Um, and then we all got sick. Oh, no. And it's just been three weeks. I still kind of have, the, like, stuffiness. Mm-hmm. And yesterday I woke up and my throat was still, like, I think it was from partly my CPAP. Oh, uh huh. Because I have like a, a CPAP machine, and it's a, like a nasal pillow thing that goes on my nose, and I ha- usually wear a chin strap. Mm-hmm. Keep my mouth from opening. Oh. If you okay. do that, then you're like, it's really weird. Anyway, then my mouth will get really dry if my mouth is open, because the CPAP is forcing air into my throat. Mm-hmm. So I, it felt like there was like one really sore spot in my throat, and I think. Mm-hmm from because then it went away okay but yeah we just been sick mm-hmm. and like feeling drained and um and it's just a head cold but those mm-hmm. are the first I, think. I especially when it's warm out and it is warm out here in michigan like almost yeah. 90 degrees or 90 degrees every day for the next and it's not if you look at the weather channel it's not ending so this is very unusual for us this time of year and so we were all at the like the tail end of it. So we mm-hmm. went away for Memorial Day weekend anyway. We went to the camper, mm-hmm. spent the weekend. It was a lot of fun. Um, although my, I got to tell on my daughter, they make these things called nose Fritas. Have you heard of them? Do you put one end in the baby's nose? Oh it's, yes, it's got a tube, and then you suck on the other end. Yeah, I'm telling you, the, it is a miracle worker. My, yes, my daughter forgot her nose; didn't have her oh, nose, Frida. Okay. She only had one of those bulb syringe things. Okay, and it was not working very well, and the poor mm-hmm. baby couldn't eat because she was so like congested. My daughter put her mouth over that baby's nose, <laughs> sucked her boogers out. Like, I would have too. Like t- at least 12 times and then spit it into, I was just like, you know, Amber, I love you, but I'm not sure that I love you enough to have done that when you were a baby, but you never know. Somebody got me one of those as a present and I was just like, oh, thanks. And then um, I would, when she was, we had the, the bulb syringes too. And I remember Joelle my, my oldest was um, just, it wasn't working and she was just so clogged up. And I remembered that thing. I'm like, well, I can give it a try. Now this is before the internet really. I mean, it wasn't before the internet, but the internet wasn't like it is now. Right. And so you couldn't Google it. You couldn't Google it the same way. Right. And, or to watch enough videos to see like the other people using it. And I tried it and instantly this all, cause there's a filter just so everybody knows. It's not like putting a straw there and you're not like, if there's a filter. Yeah. It doesn't go in your mouth when you use the nose. Right. Frida. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. Unlike what your daughter did, but um, it is a miracle. All of a sudden my, like my kid was like, like as a baby, she was just like, I can breathe and like became happy and it was just like, Oh, so I give it, I try to, whenever I think of it, when there's a baby shower, I will give it and you get the same reaction from everybody. They're like, Oh, thanks. Like they think it's yeah. gross. And they think they're That's never going to use it. Like you have to bottle feed a baby who's so congested mm-hmm. that they can't get suction because they can't breathe through their nose. I always tell the, the new moms, Put this somewhere where you'll remember where it is. And then when they're teenagers, if you didn't use it, then you can come back and tell me. But I'm telling you, in that first year, you're going to be so happy you have this. And they're always like, eh. But anyway. Well, we had gone up the hill at the campground and to visit some. My daughter used to live on the campground. So she has friends up there. And mm-hmm. this lady was telling her how she read a missionary book. And in, and then Africa and other countries of the world where they don't have nose of Frida's, that's what the moms do. They mm. like put their mouth over the baby's nose and suck it out and spit it on the ground. Sorry for grossing everybody out. But if you're a mom and you've ever had an infant that cannot breathe, you're probably like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'll do it. Then I, you can Lysol afterwards. Not Lysol. No, what it, Listerine. Let's <laughs> not commit suicide. What did you say precast? It was so funny. I'm like, you got to tell that on air. Oh, did you know they have an interstate highway in Hawaii? No, it wasn't that. That is funny. It wasn't that. It was before that. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember either. I'm 54, so I'm even older than you. We should record everything we do because I I swear this stuff beforehand is so much funnier and better than what we do with the show. But 
So, so yeah, that we were sick. We went away for Memorial Day weekend. That was fun. I got sunburned in like a really strange, like I only put sunblock on half of my like yeah. area right here. Your chest. So mm-hmm. half of it, like in a really weird shape, is sunburned. <laughs> like this. Yeah, that's pretty much my life these days. And mm-hmm. and um that's about it. I did mm-hmm. not I did no writing. I didn't either. No, that's a lie. I did. On that retreat, I did some writing then. Um, because I had some downtime, which I never do, and it was it was good. It was really good. But yeah, other than that, like I've just been too busy. But summer vacation can't is coming. I think when my head feels like it's floating ten feet above my body, because you know that yeah. mm-hmm. when you have head congestion, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a good thing we weren't having a podcast because I'm not sure how I would have been hacking and coughing and yeah. You know, I think it's okay for us to take breaks just so everybody who's maybe new and just happening across us. Like we've been doing this for years now and um, we're down to co-host uh, Ron Hangerman is still out on a, um, a medical leave for right now. And uh, Jamie Hirschberger is um, taking a leave as well for taking care of some like career things and, and some things that she's got going on. Um, and so like, it is more work when it's just two of us, but also the fact that like, we don't get paid for that. That's, I think people think that like podcasts, somehow you make money. Like some people probably do. If you're famous to begin with, I think you can probably make money. If you could we recruit all your friends so we could get thousands of followers, maybe we can make some money. Maybe, but we do this as a <laughs> ministry. If we, if we right. from the very beginning, we always said that if we ever started making money, we would just like feed it back into the podcast in different ways. And we have like, you know, big dreams and stuff, but, um, the so we're gonna have to take breaks sometimes and that's okay yeah. but i did miss everybody like i i even when i wasn't like able to like kind of hang out on, on facebook and try to like continue making relationships that way like i was thinking about everybody and i remember sitting at that retreat going oh i can't wait for the podcast to tell everybody here because i met some other podcasters there too so yeah. I'm like, i can't wait to go back to the podcast and tell all, all everybody we got a lot of wait. new um people that joined the group we did. I did notice that. Weeks. Yeah. One person put my name in the, you know, the questions you have to answer. Like name one of the Tina co-hosts. with an exclamation point. <laughs> I really want to ask them why the why? exclamation point. Like, wow. <laughs> I'm famous or something. I don't know. Yeah. What's up? And you okay. know that like there, because like if someone was just going to like Google, you come up as Christina, like, you know, co-host right. of the Christian, you come up as Christina. You, they so. have to listen or know me to know that I'm called Tina. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I don't see any what's up in the chat. So maybe, I guess we should just move on to our topic. Sounds good. For today, which I which have is- on my phone. Which we absolutely need to talk about because, like you said, this yeah. last month, neither one of us really wrote. I wrote a little bit, but we really didn't write. And um, we got to yeah. figure out a way to make sure that as summer vacation rolls in, our careers don't roll out, you know? Yeah. So that is our topic, fitting writing into your summer fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the what is our first tip? What is our first thing that we need to do to fit all that in? Well, plan ahead. So like I say summer fun, we said summer fun. I started thinking like, well, what does that really mean? Like I start looking already at what my kids have scheduled this summer. We have a retreat in the UP that we're doing and we, my kids are taking uh, two of my, my two older daughters are going on a mission trip in July. And like, I feel like summer's already over because of everything happening. So it'd be very easy for me to like just not be writing because I'm so busy with other things but just like I plan ahead and know when their mission trip is and I know about this retreat and I we're going to do a family vacation when I think about those things I'm planning ahead right I should do the same thing with my writing so I need to know all these things that I have going on like not just my kids or it could be your grandkids because I know we talked about that that you know you um I'll let you talk about that but like my husband or my parents schedules and and I need to like know that in advance and then I need to schedule writing around that not just expect that it's going to happen right right if I do that if I just say oh I'll do it when I have time it won't happen Mm-mm. I know myself if it's not scheduled it won't happen Mm-hmm. And, you know, I almost wanted to put fun in parentheses or, or not parentheses, <laughs> in quote more air quotes, quotes. because <laughs> when you're a mom, especially like it's a little different for me because all of my kids are grown and out mm-hmm. of the house. Um, <clears throat> but when you're a mom, it's almost like it's 
summer, everybody else is fun. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love summer vacation. And I love my kids being around all the time, but I homeschool now. So I guess I feel I have this summer vacation vibe all the time, but, but yes, I know what you mean. It is more work for moms for sure. Yeah. Like, you, you know, the kids want to go to the beach. The kids want to go to the park. There's family vacations. Um, the sun is out, the days are longer, the bees are buzzing, the flowers are blooming, like mm -hmm. the beach is calling or mm -hmm. the lake or whatever. And you want a barbecue and, you know, your spouse wants you to like hang out with them longer in the evening because the sun's up longer. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it's just so seems like summer isn't much of a break if you're a mom with, especially I had four kids. Mm -hmm. So I know you, you're feeling me. You have three, but mm -hmm. I always said. Well, four, I raised six, though. I yeah, mean, like, four's yeah, not that much different than three. Right. I feel like once you hit three, like the others are just bonus. I kind of feel this, like, <laughs> I kind of feel like that. Yeah. I, my it, house doesn't feel that much different having only three kids in the house now, as opposed to when I had six kids. It really, yeah. for some reason, it doesn't feel much different to me. But And like when my youngest was born, my oldest was 15. Mm. So, and she loves babies. Like she still loves babies. So mm -hmm. she's like, mom, can I change the baby's diaper? And I'm like, don't ever ask. Just do it. <laughs> it's your job now. <laughs> just do it. Just do whatever you want to do with the baby. Like don't, don't give them away to a stranger. Like, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the only parameter you have. <laughs> I mean, I was tired. I know. I, I remember. Like, no days. wonder people have babies when they're young. Mm -hmm. Cause I was just tired. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it seems like you're scheduling summer around everybody else having fun. Right. And I'm kind of back in that position a little bit because my granddaughter is going to be here. I, mean, I was wanting to get her the whole summer, but her mom was like, oh, that's a long time. So I'm not sure how much it'll be, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have her here for a good chunk of the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm going to have to do some thinking about what are we going to do? She's not going to want to sit around in the house mm -hmm. all the time. So I'm going to have to schedule her some fun, mm -hmm. but maybe I could do it in a way that I could get some writing done while she's having fun. Right. That's a good idea. Yeah. So planning, that's our first thing. Mm -hmm. Along with the planning and along with knowing what the schedule is, then my suggestion is to plan early morning writing while the kids are still asleep, which this could be something that's used year round, but in the summertime they can sleep in longer. So you don't have to get up as early. So like, you're not like dog tired. And for me, when the sun is up, I'm up. Like my husband leaves at like five or five 30 in the morning. Um, and I, and I'm like not awake. Like I say goodbye to him, but I'm not awake, but literally before 6 a.m., I'm up. So he's only been gone out of the house like 10, 15 minutes most of the days. And I'm just wide awake. And so why did I get up this morning and write? I don't know because I'm being lazy, but I need to every, this is my plan is every day. Like once, once I wake up, get up and get some writing done um, because the kids are still asleep. So take advantage of that. Um, the and My granddaughter, when she's with us on the weekends, naturally sleeps till like nine or 10. Mm hmm. Um, and I usually am up too. Like I hear my husband leave. Mm -hmm. Like I don't get out of bed before he leaves. I don't know why. I guess I'm a bad wife. I should probably get no. up and like kiss him goodbye. Yeah. But... Who put those parameters? No, don't say don't you're know. a bad wife. But I like I literally wait till he's gone to get up and go to the bathroom. I don't mm -hmm. know why. It's just what I do. But mm -hmm. right. I should be writing instead of playing whiteout or whatever game. <laughs> So Piper brings up our next point that we have on here. Oops, my mouse is not working. She says, some people are morning people. Some people are night people. I'm a burn the candle at both ends kind of person. Oh, gosh. Morning I, and my, night. Yeah. My friend Linda is like that, too. Well, my um, our next point is that, conversely, you can plan late night writing. So if you're a, a not an early bird, but you're a night owl, then plan to have late night writing. But here is the 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 danger of this is that summer days are long and nights are short so it may be a recipe for disaster like your kids may like stay up later or you might have like a campfire planned or or just depends on what it's like so if that's the case you maybe you need to have some agreement with your husband or a friend or we're going to get to that later the friends but um so you may have to like let everyone know that okay it's this time if you're not going to bed you're leaving me alone i don't know so 
Plus, you're going to be exhausted with kids. So this is why does, late night writing does not work for me at this stage in life because I'm just exhausted. When, when my girls were little during the school year, I could do late night writing because they went to bed at like 730 or 8. I, I would have a good two hours of writing time, then go to bed and have a good night's sleep. You know, well, it's mm -hmm. not like that anymore. They're older. We are active and doing things and, you know, youth right. group things. And it's just a different point of life for me so yeah and the weekends around here in the winter my husband likes to watch reruns of mash and stuff like that mm -hmm. that's the way because he's like a hundred miles an hour go 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 kind of guy and the only time he sits still is when he's doing that mm. and um my granddaughter i liked likes to watch a movie before she goes to bed mm -hmm. so that's a good hour and a half where they're both distracted but i use that to work at my paying job when i have tasks so yeah i can't really depend on it it just depends on if i have work or not right and that's something we really didn't talk about is a lot of the um men and women that are listening to this have daytime jobs too yeah. so again like the early thing could work for you the late night thing could work for you but it is all about planning ahead yeah Barbara says, I have to wait for hubby and kitty kitties to fall asleep or settle. <laughs> and no. Piper, Piper wants to encourage you, Tina. She says, you're being considerate by not getting into the bathroom before he leaves. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, just in case he has like a last minute, you have to run in there or something. Right. All right. So our first point was plan ahead. The second right. point. Find a writing buddy. Yes. Uh, and, you know. I used to do this, not with writing, but other stuff that I had to do. I had a friend who had a child my youngest age because I worked full time until my youngest was born. Mm -hmm. And then I decided because the shenanigans that my older kids got into while I was at work, you mm -hmm. know, that two hour window between three and five. Mm -hmm. uh, I decided and my husband was a supervisor in the shop at the time. This was mm -hmm. before the whole um, fall of GM and all that. Right. Um, so we could afford for me to be a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. So I would go there and they would play and we would get stuff done, mm. you know? So mm -hmm. if you could find that where, you know, you if your kids are old enough that they don't need your attention full time and you find them a buddy to, if they have someone to play with, then you and your friend can get some stuff done. Mm hmm. I'm also a very much like a multitasker. I can write and still know if I'm in the same room with my kids or outside with my kids, I know where they are the whole time. If you are not that kind of person, do not take this piece of advice. But um, I would take them. There's a quiet park where it was like very like there was, there was actually a fence all the way around the playground. And I can see the kids the whole time. And I would sit just outside the fence at a picnic table and I would write, but my kids were a little bit older. I could hear them the whole time. And I wasn't like, I could do that. Not everybody can do that because yeah. like, safety first. Right. Right. Um, but yes. But so finding a writing buddy, someone who has kids that wants to write as well. And the kids can, you can set up play dates and seriously, my kids, if they had friends over, they don't need me for hours. They will leave me alone for hours if they have friends over. And so that's a great one. Or you could find somebody with older children who like to play with little children and set up play dates with them. <laughs> so then you feel yeah, even a writing more. Buddy with teenagers. If you have little kids mm -hmm. that like to, or that are, will be around, you know, sometimes teenagers are just gone, but and not all of you have writing buddies. Like I um, was having a conversation with somebody recently that um, that she wants to, has wanted to write for a while, but like she didn't have anyone else in her life that was doing that. So now I'm in her life and she's all excited about that. And I'm excited for her. Um, but so find someone who's not a writing buddy, but who's willing to exchange sitting. If you need yeah. like time and maybe it's not going to be every day, but if you need time to write, and she's willing to hang out with your kids, she might need time to go grocery shopping without her kids or clean your house without her kids. Like, just keep in mind that they're take, a nap, without like, her take kids. a nap without her kids. <laughs> and if you're willing to exchange it, then you might be able to get some good quality writing in a couple times a week, at least by doing this. So, right. So Barbara has a, a good little uh, tip there that fits into our That's next point. Which is, are we done with the writing buddies thing? I feel like we were. Yes. Um, fit it into quiet moments. So if your kids are young enough to take a nap, if they're watching a movie, mm -hmm. um, if they go to a friend's to play, and she says lunchtime at work, mm -hmm. that's a, you go somewhere, 
Um, Piper says, I've gone back to using a virtual office during the hours before the rest of the house wakes up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We used to always keep office hours. And once I started homeschooling, it just the hours that we had for office hours did not work for me. And it was, it did not work for my kids. And I had to yeah. make that hard choice, but like, I, I do miss having set office hours. I just got to figure out how that works for me as a homeschooling mom. Yeah. So. Yeah, because, you got to set them up at a time that works for you and then mm -hmm. figuring out what time that works for you and then finding someone else that time also works for. Right, exactly. To do it with you, yeah. Yep. All right, what's our next point? Uh, get your kids writing. Yeah. I really like this one. So have I you done to, this with your girls? I have not. So my girls, I think, are all kind of writers naturally, but I think that mom encouraging it feels like well, my writing is mom's thing. And maybe it's just the age that they're at. Phoebe, I think would be more because she's younger. Um, and I know that Chloe is writing right now, but she doesn't want me to read any of it. And that's okay. Um, but if my kids were younger, I would a hundred percent be doing this. Like if I'd homeschooled them young, like younger than I started younger. Um, but I, like, I think I love the idea of scheduling writing sprint times as a family. Like, yeah. Just do one, maybe two writing sprints and then share, like share what, uh, have your kids share with you what they've written and just celebrate it no matter what it is. Right. Because that's how, what writing sprints are for is just to get writing. And that would yeah. be so exciting. But then also the cool thing is, is sharing your writing with them. Like yeah. they don't need to wait till it's out in novel form. And then that's kind yeah, of as long as you're writing clean romance and not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think if you're watching our podcast, yes. you're probably not writing something. I should that probably not say shouldn't. everything that comes into my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine's perfectly safe. I can share it with my kids. But, but I was thinking too, like if your kids are too young to write or they don't like to write, they could be reading while true. you're writing. You could my set the timer mm -hmm. and the sprint could be them reading something. And then at the end, they share what they read. I was just going to say that that's the most, I think, important thing that we've learned about sprinting. <clears throat> so when we went on our first writing retreat, um, you know this, I'm just telling this for everybody else, um, right. that we would sprint. We did the Pomodoro method. Like if you and you have any questions about that, we have a book called 30 Days of Writing Sprint Prompts um, that's by the Christian Indie Writers. Um, but we would do. 25 minutes, five minute break, 25 minutes, five minute break, 25 minutes, five minute break, longer break, I think is what we did three. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't share after each one. And then we would have like lunch or something, but we would share at lunchtime and then we'd share later in the day. But um, the sharing part is the most important part because first of all, it makes you vulnerable, but it like, it's exciting to share something that you're excited about and get other people get excited for you. And it becomes a thing where everyone is uh, that you sprint with, they become part of your process and they become invested in your, in your writing and in your career. So think about how much more important that is to your kids to be invested yeah. in them. They pick a book that they want to read and then they share with you and they share and you listen intently, like, and ask questions about what they're reading. And, and if you're not a like homeschool mom, you could easily take that and say, well, what is the main character? What mm -hmm. is the top, like, what is the theme, you know? And, and you can incorporate less English lessons mm -hmm. and they won't even realize it. <laughs> right. But just make it exciting for them. So, right. cause it, it is good. Yes. It's very definitely, it could be um, educational, but more about just building their self esteem that like when they speak what the words that they say, the things that their ideas are important, mm -hmm. you know, I just love that idea. Uh, oh, thanks, Barbara. She says she highly recommends our book. I really appreciate that. And um, I wanted to say too, before I forget, that, that sharing as an author, mm -hmm. like even before you're published, was so um, beneficial to me because I was going to publish my writing for the mm -hmm. entire world to be able to read it. And mm -hmm. if I can't get past that little hiccup of, of not wanting to be vulnerable to share it with my friends, yeah, like how am I going to share it with the world? So I needed like those little baby steps. Yeah. And, then, and it was hard. It's uh, it like you hard. people people look at us and we just share it with the world right now, but we didn't start that way. And then yeah. when we started doing it on the podcast, that was a little vulnerable, but like it like I don't even think about it now. Right. So because it just really feels like we're sharing with our friends and we just kind of like don't think about the fact that the world has access to it now, right? But 
Right. Piper says her grandkids are supposed to set a timer for reading every day. So that is a great idea. Also, I used to do quiet time, quote unquote, where I had to had them sit on the couch with books and I put it on instrumental instrumental music. That's a great idea. On and wrote while they read and listened and just chilled for an hour, however long I could stretch it for. LOL. <laughs> right. I mean, that's great too. But you may want to try though a timer for shorter periods and like get up and do silly dancing with them. Like how and then they'll look forward to this. Like mm-hmm. this is time with mom or with grandma that is special and they won't even realize that like you're getting your writing done and accomplishing big things and they're accomplishing big things. It's just fun time. You know, so I might actually use that. My granddaughter's only in kindergarten, so she can't really read or write yet. Mm -hmm. Um, But she can draw and she loves to draw. And I have fancy uh, markers, the watercolor markers and stuff Uh she likes to use. So I could set her up with her markers and she can tell a story through a picture. So that's a great idea. When my middle daughter, the one I told you that I know is writing right now, but she doesn't want me to read it. When she was in second grade, um, she was in one of the advanced classes and then like, so we went in and met with a teacher like three or four times a year just to update. And he was showing me her, um, all her math tests. And at the bottom of the math test were all these just like drawings. And he was just like, yeah, she, she gets done earlier than the other kids. So she just does that. And I'm like more looking at the drawings. Right. And he's talking about math. I'm listening. Um, and she's doing fine in math or whatever. And then, um, I said, do you know what she's doing down here? He's like, yeah, she gets done early. I'm like, no, no, She's telling you a story. And if you took all her math tests and you start with the first one, she she had these like characters that she was building. And they were like they actually had like things that were like they were doing through these like pictures and stuff. And um, he had not noticed it because he's a math and science guy. He d- obviously taught language arts, too. But um, yeah, so that I think could really work because that. Yeah, that that was Chloe doesn't love math she can do it she's it's not hard for her but she doesn't love it that's how she got through math i think is that she was like get the test done and then i can go into my story world and it really (laughs) it it will teach their brain to think Mm -hmm. of stories Mm -hmm. before they can even write or read them Mm -hmm. they can make up their own stories plus you should see my chloe's artwork she got she asked for a drawing tablet for christmas and like so we didn't get an ipad i wish now we'd just like invested an ipad for her like a a less expensive one but it this is this thing that hooks to her laptop and it has a a drawing thing she does the most beautiful like graphic arts now like just really she's really talented and it started with like when she was little so you don't know what what that will spark in her maybe she's not meant to be a writer but maybe athena will be an artist or maybe i think they can a lot of it go hand in hand because all art tells a story And I think that being able to tell a story is beneficial to your brain, whether you become a writer or not. Yes. So absolutely. Yeah. No. All right. I think that's my favorite tip of um, all of them. My phone, which had my outline on it, just died. All right. Well, it's okay. I'll take over because, you know, I don't mind talking. (laughs) Really? All right. So our tips are um, get make sure that you plan ahead. Grab a writing buddy. Fit it into quiet moments. And get your kids involved. Our final tip, which is kind of like wrapping it all up, is be prepared for the unexpected. So no plan is going to be perfect. No, not every writing buddy like play date is not going to work out. Maybe it doesn't work out at all. But you know what? It's okay. Give yourself some grace because family and even if like you, your kids are grown or you don't have any kids, summer is kind of a time to like spend with friends and family and get out inside out of, you know, our houses. And and I know we're coming from a Michigan perspective where people kind of hole up for the winter, but get out in nature Hi, and enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy God's presence. And it's okay because you know what? The writing will always be there. My yeah. kids, like my my Joelle is going to graduate next year. And I, every time I think about it, I get nauseous because <laughs> I think like, I want to go back and do some things over and you just can't. So moving yeah. forward, I just make sure. I that, know that like, feeling. Well, yeah, I'm moving forward. I'm just making sure that I do things well. And so it's okay. If you're writing kind of sputters a little bit over the summer, do all these things that we suggest, do your best. But if it doesn't work out, that's okay. Just give yourself some grace and enjoy your give family it and replan. Yes. Of course, I have number six adaptability. So Yes, you do, which I appreciate. The replan is like in my DNA. Yeah. (laughs) But like I, you know, when I was a um, medical assistant and I was on the, what do they call it? The float pool. 
mm-hmm. which means that I didn't have a regular job. I was, they would call me when they needed to fill in. And they would always send me to these doctors that nobody else wanted to fill in with Mm. because I was so highly adaptable and it was just, I did, they didn't get, I didn't get upset. And I had this way of kind of anticipating what they wanted before they did. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was, it was a gift, (laughs) but like I used that in my, I just didn't realize how much I used that in life. Like, Oh, we can't do that. Okay. Let's do this. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, my daughter calls me. Mom, let's go to the beach. Okay. Like, <laughs> let's just reschedule everything and go to the beach. Because when I was younger, I grew up in Alaska, which sounds wonderful, right? Mm-hmm. But all our family was in the lower 48. Mm. My All my cousins on my mom's side. <laughs> sorry, I was reading Piper's comment oh. and I got distracted lived in Minnesota and my cousins on my dad's side lived in New York city. And I, and I would felt really lonely and I was like, I just want to have family around me. Mm -hmm. And so now if my daughter wants to do something like we want to go shopping with me, I hate shopping, but I'll go shopping with her. Like you shop, I'll hold the baby. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's a rough life. (laughs) Terrible, terrible. Cause you know, that's what's important in life. I don't mm-hmm. think I'm ever going to be on my deathbed and go, oh, I wish I'd written more books. You're right. I'm probably going to say I wish I'd spent more time with my kids. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And so let's said, answer, you know, Tina. What are you saying? The all right, You said something really... and re, something and replan. She couldn't Pivot. understand. Pivot. Pivot. P-I-V-O-T. Like ch- change direction. So, all right. Okay. I think that's, that's it. it. I think it's time for the feeding of the backs. It is. Dun, da, da. So for those of you who are new to us and like, what is she talking about? We have this, you know, have you heard of this little thing called feedback? You know, mm-hmm. give someone feedback. So well, Jamie used to say, is your back well fed? When we had our writing group. So we call this the feeding of the backs. And we set a timer for 15 minutes right before the podcast. And um, we have a prompt, which is five words a lot of the time. And we write when we try to use the five words. Sometimes we just wave at them as we go on by. Um, Mm -hmm. And then we don't have time for editing or planning. So we don't give negative feedback. We only give positive feedback about how wonderful our maybe not so wonderful writing is. (laughs) So, what did you write for us? To give us the prompts, Jen, and right. tell us what you wrote. I, I actually ended up using only three, and the one I thought I was going to use, I didn't even end up using. But um, moral, assumption, depression, go, and lip. And Tina um, got us these words on Tuesday during our meeting and I did the graphics for them. And I've like, for, since, since Tuesday, I've been like, this is so great. I can't wait to use the word lip. Like I'm going to do a kissing scene. I'm so excited. It's not a kissing scene. Like I just, oh. I, I did not go that direction. And also as a reminder, when I do this, and for those that are listening, I like make like an X mark with like, with my hands. Um, it means there's, I don't know ex- exactly what word I want to put there. I have the idea, whatever. And so I just, I keep going because it's a sprint. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Colleen McGuire was a peculiarity. Oh, that's hard for me to say. Kate had made the decision to help the widow on the assumption that she needed him. And although that assumption was basically true, the widow McGuire wasn't the helpless widow he'd assumed her to be. While he'd expected a woman in the throes of depression grappling with her husband's death while her ranch fell apart around her, what he found was quite different. He found a woman who was far stronger than her stature would suggest with a will and determination just as strong, who faced each day and each trial. That's the word I wanted. That's where the X's are supposed to be. With the same strength, which I put in all caps. I don't want to use the word strength. Sorry, I'll stop doing that. Eat with the same strength as any man Cade had ever met, more than some men he had known, if he were being honest. He found himself realizing that while he was helping her, he realized she only needed his muscle for she had been as for if she had been as strong as Cade, she wouldn't need him at all. And the thought was humbling, humbled. That's what Cade felt. 
He hadn't considered his own ego when taking on the task of helping Mrs. McGuire, but now, as he considered all the things the Lord had been revealing to him, he could now see that his choices were highly influenced by his own desires to be needed, to be the hero to this woman that had no interest in him other than whether or not he could fix her fence. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. If Kate had heard his mother quote the scripture one time, he'd heard her quote it a hundred times, but it never felt more real to him than, at, than as he stood here, watching the widow dig the fence post hole, sweat gathering on her upper lip, and wisps of her strawberry gold hair stuck to her face in a way that somehow made her more beautiful. Cade's pride had motivated his decisions, and it was his pride that was causing the rift between him and his temporary boss. Three, two, one. Nice. You did use the word lip. I did, but not in a kissing. I'm, ex- I'm kind of disappointed because I really am in the mood to write a kissing scene, but this is what came out. So, and I don't um, hate it. So, I really like this uh, little glimpse into Cade's mind and mm-hmm. his thinking, mm-hmm. and especially his realizing um, of uh, one of his faults. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, you know, Guy, my husband is definitely a rescuer. Mm -hmm. like he rescues people that is what he does like it's just who he is these people we know had had a house fire this week and lost everything Mm. and he's just going out of his way to get them what they need and because he's a rescuer and Mm -hmm. so i feel like kate you know some people call it um some knight in shining armor syndrome or something but i don't think we should call it a syndrome Uh, Mm because i think it is something to be admired Mm. that you want to help people as mm-hmm. long as you're not doing it from a place of pride so i really i'm sorry i'm like analyzing your character now it's okay no, this is good real. stuff he yeah. is real but <laughs> yeah i really like that because as a thinker it makes me like want to dig into him mm. and like really know who he is mm-hmm. i appreciate that plus we've taught we've had episodes where we talk about giving your characters flaws and how to make your characters real and so he's He's not going to be perfect. And like for him to finally to realize that like it's his pride that has been causing a lot of the problems between him and Colleen, Mm -hmm. I think is like, it's a good thing. And it'll be a humbling thing because she's also prideful too. And I think it's like that in real life. Mm -hmm. Like when we get defensive with someone, isn't it pride that makes us defensive? Mm -hmm. Like you have offended me. That's total selfishness and pride. It really is. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Really good stuff. Shell says, love how you use his past in his thoughts to reveal his character to us. Oh, thanks, Shell. I appreciate that. Yeah. I love this guy so much. So, all right. But as I'm writing this, I wrote this in all caps uh, at the bottom because I want to make sure I shared it with all of you. Uh, As I'm writing this, I had a realization that her husband did just die. Like, I know that this this is how the story starts out. I need to some I think I need to create some space between the husband's death um and the romance starting like it's kind of like all happening pretty fast even if nothing else in propriety like you know what, what will the everyone around them think right. of her right or maybe that's part of what keeps them apart because you know, she was not in love with her husband like like maybe she, she really needs rough... to be having some internal guilt feelings or or Cade has internal guilt feelings like she yeah. just yeah they both so. could because like why should we be feeling this so soon I, I don't know how to take this from Piper that was great not <laughs> I don't know what that means she's gonna have to explain it uh good thing I know Piper well I know she's not a troll so <laughs> maybe she accidentally hit enter and that was she was a done uh <laughs> I don't, i've done that before like in a oh yeah like a com- a comment and then you hit mm-hmm. enter because you want a new paragraph right and then it sends the thing before you're done <laughs> i hate that oh, all right i want to hear what you wrote tina okay so i don't know why i wrote this in first person hmm. i've been reading um, a lot of romance lately that's first person historical romance and no. i don't hate it it's weird because i used to hate it but anyway Anyway, I, I feels kind of weird and disjointed to me. And I w- mm-hmm. if I was going to use this for anything, I would probably go back and rewrite it in, in third person. Mm-hmm. But this is what came out. It is what it is. <clears throat> you could make a moral assumption about the actions that we took that winter, but you weren't there. You don't know what we faced. 
-hmm. after the power went out, we did our best to come together as a community. I started a soup kitchen of sorts. It had a lot in common with the story called Stone Soup I read as a kid. (laughs) We never really had the same soup twice. It just depended on what people contributed to the pot. Sometimes Mm -hmm. there would even be bread to go with it. Granted, it was usually old and about to grow mold, but you couldn't begrudge people needing to feed their children. Things were okay until some of us started to get sick. The children and the older people had the worst of it. With no medicine to speak of, it was back to the old days of rest, fluid, and prayer. Mm -hmm. Then some of the young men got it in their heads that they were the strongest of us and should Mm -hmm. have the authority. They began to see us older folks as a burden. I saw it all coming and I got out, made my way into the hills where our summer cottage from the days before sat near a lake at the base of a mountain. Conveniently, I would purchased a fancy solar generator. In the days before, it was all about being green and not leaving a carbon footprint. Hmm. The government kept promising to get away from fossil fuels. Many people were against it, but were powerless to stop what the elites wanted. When the fossil fuels were gone, what was left was unsustainable. And once the power went out, chaos ensued. Their high tech wouldn't work. The internet that everyone's lives revolved around was just gone. But I had enough power for a few lights in the stove. I decided to keep my bounty to myself. I try to have faith in humanity, but I know reality as well. If you have something they want and you're weaker than them, they'll take it. So one day, I made my way back into the encampment to trade some of my greenhouse tomatoes for a bag of flour and came upon a commotion at the gate. An older man about my age lay on the ground, a group of young men surrounding him. He struggled to his feet and stumbled down the road as they shouted after him, and don't come back either. The young men turned and went back inside the gate, laughing and high-fiving. One of them held a rifle above his head. Check out my new gun, he said. Let somebody try and give me lip now. I hurried after the man who quickly ran out of steam and collapsed beside the road. His eye was turning black and his lip was swollen and bleeding. His skin was as pale as death and when I tried to help him up, I realized he was burning with fever. I pulled my mask over my face and helped him up anyway. Come on, I have somewhere we can go. It's not far. He murmured something unintelligible and we made our way slowly to my hidden cart where I put him covered in old flower sacks while my old Malamute pulled him back to my cabin. Three, two, one. Ah... So good, Tina. So, like, okay, first of all, Samaritan, like, analogy. I just love it. Um, and I, so, like, is this, a, this is a new character. Like, kind of in, like, this does not fit in any of your stories, right? No, it doesn't. So, you could end up writing a whole story that's in first person. Because I kind of liked it. Like, more than kind of. I liked the first person, surprisingly. Like, because I used, I used to hate first person in books, but... Yeah, I don't know if I could sustain that for a whole book. That would yeah. be weird. Yeah. But maybe. The, the juicy part of that and the interesting part of that is when you write, everything is only from one perspective. So it really is a testament to your writing. And like, but it's also a way to be creative too. Like, you know, to you really have to rely on some subtext and some like, um, like let your readers make their own decisions on things that you try to lead them down the direction, like, because your character isn't figuring things out, but you want your readers to start figuring things out. Like it could yeah. be really good. Yeah. That was well done. I really liked it. I think so. it comes from the fact that I've been playing a game on my phone called frozen city. <laughs> where oh. it's like basically the power went out and you, and it's a, like a eternal winter. Mm. <laughs> And you have to, like, you have survivors that you have to keep alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. That's probably why that was just came out the way it did. But oh, I don't know that I would do anything with this or not. Oh. All right. Piper says, oh, my gosh, Tina, the character's voice in the story. Totally my jam. Yeah, I agree. it was great. Thanks. Barbara says, yes, good, Sam. And I want a solar Jenny. First person is tough. Yeah, I think you did. I think you did well with it. Good job. And Shell says, so great, Tina. Uh, love the characters and the setting. Thanks. Great. Yeah, well done. Thanks. Awesome. So with that over, I kind of miss having Jamie here because her stuff is usually so cerebral for me. Like, I really <laughs> like her stuff. I miss Jamie. I miss I Rhonda. Miss 
I miss Rhonda too. Her mm-hmm. stuff, like all of our writing has its own flavor, of course, yeah. because we're four different people. Right. And I feel like half of us is missing. And so when we do these stories, like we get the romance from you and we get like this weird sci-fi a lot of times from Jamie, mm-hmm. or we get like these characters, like that, the one with the little girl, like in the, in the Appalachian kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or and then we get like the cozy stuff from Rhonda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I I hope they can come back soon. Yeah. Anyway, it's time for our what's next. Um. So what's next for you? Well, next week will be a lot slower than this week. Hopefully, um, I have I do have a tour on Monday to visit a a co-op to see if we want to join this co-op and um then yeah so i'm going to start trying to do the early morning writing get back in the habit of that so that's my what's next i've still got to work on cover images and um oh my books display over here what in the world's been going on in my bookshelves um for book four and get that like all just neatly tied up with a bow, but so maybe I should do that before more writing. I don't know. Is this a co-op that you have to teach at, or you just take no. your kids to? You just so take that, your kids to. That could be some prime writing time mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, my kids would probably just be like some electives, and what I don't know. Like you don't have to like go like and take a whole day. If it was that, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'll have more to report maybe next week when I come back. So yeah, that could be helpful. Yeah. So what's next for me? My granddaughter graduates kindergarten on Thursday Aww. at 10 a.m. So hopefully we can go to that. I don't know if you have to have like tickets or we're trying mm-hmm. to figure that out. And then ho- and then hopefully she's going to be spending some time here with me. So I'm going to have to figure out my plan and how I'm going to work out my writing. Um, but I need to get this book done. I have not been – I have like – so few words left to get it done Mm -hmm. and i don't know why i'm stuck and not doing Mm it we need to get together and write we need to pick some days and And when i do write it just doesn't feel right Mm -hmm. like what i write i keep i keep rejecting Hmm. so i don't know maybe we just need to get together and talk it through that helps me so much when we're able to i need you to read it and give me some feedback hmm I feel like that's what I need more than anything. Okay. Well, we can work that out too. Yeah. So that's about it. That's all right. Just anybody in the chat has are there any what's next in there? I don't see any. Nope. Okay. So I guess that concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Until next week when we are going to discuss giving your book away for free. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. May your pen be prolific. May your deadlines be met. And may all of your words honor Christ. Bye, everyone. Bye.